30 degrees, 13 percent. Nah. comes the sun dun, dun. laser bullet i've got some thoughts on this thing now let's go for a ride i've done the roughest road to talk to you on ah so what is it? Well, it's the laser bullet, which is, there are, oh, for God's sake. Look at this. <laughs> it's their aero road helmet. It's not a time trial helmet, and it's not a road helmet. It's in between. So that is what it is. But let's actually talk specifically about this helmet. What we'll do is we'll break it into three sections. Form, function, and performance. Because I think with the aero road helmet specifically, you are, we well, are sacrificing something along the way. You just have to be because of the nature of the build. And the question for you will be, is that sacrifice worthwhile? So we'll go form, function, and performance. Now, before we talk about the form of this helmet, we have to talk about my custom uh, additions. So, for those of you who follow me on Instagram, you will have seen I threw some uh, blue spray paint on the top. Look, the reason for that is I, I, I kind of wanted the helmets to pop out in the bunch. I thought a bit of colour might go a long way to help that. Take into account that aesthetic when I do start talking now about the form. A huge part of the form of these helmets is their weight. So this thing tips the scales at about 315 grams, which to put that in perspective, our Z1 road helmets run at about 250 or something like that. It compares pretty evenly with most barking dogs that want to kill me. Bondrager Ballistas, I think the Giro Vanquish, they're around the 300 grams, that kind of area. So pretty comparable, but it is a weight difference. It's a weight difference to a road helmet that you know, if you're going to notice weight difference somewhere, I think you're gonna feel it on your head. A fit of helmets can be weird, right? It's very, very personal in my opinion. Like, for me, actually, the most comfortable helmet that I've ever ridden up to now has actually been the uh, Cask Mojito. A lot of people hate that helmet. Pure comfort-wise, I don't like particular its performance, but pure comfort-wise, I loved that helmet. I would say that this is just as comfortable as as that for me. Just the shape of your head, all that kind of stuff. I've, I don't know, got a pretty normal head, I think. But I do genuinely like the, the way that it kind of sits on the head. What the hell was that? So much roadkill around at the moment. The buckle sort of system at the back is quite smooth. It's like a little boa there quite easily adjustable. It's not sort of overly complicated adjustment, I've found just generally. Uh, it does sit lower on the forehead, which I quite like. Less sort of helmet sunglass gap, which is nice. And the strap itself, again, not overly complicated. I'm still kind of playing with it a little bit to get the right spot, but I found kind of theory, it doesn't feel like a bucket on your head. I know with some aero helmets, you can get that feeling of, you know, big massive bucket, not with this. Functionality. Uh, guys, this is an incredibly useful helmet. So here's what I mean by that. These grill things, see them on top of my head there? They are all interchangeable. So I'm running the least aero setup at the moment. This is a kind of vented one that I've rolled up. I've got a, another vented one at the back there, painted custom blue. So the least aero, right? 
That goes all the way through to full plastic covering across the top, no, vet, no air, no vents, which I'll be honest is what we've run pretty much with the race team so far. According to Ben Van Dam, five watts faster, the full aero solution as opposed to what I'm running here. So guys, you have eight? You have eight different options, right? With, with, the, uh, with the top, which does make big changes. The other thing is, I quite like the look of these, these grids. It's uh, quite a sort of unique look. Quite cool, actually. It's easier with two hands, but then you're not here. Oh, that's like, that actually makes a dramatic difference. You get, a, you get an immediate whack on the top of your head because what's happening there is, okay, you're getting that little vent, but you're also opening up the grill vents. So there's all these little vents that run along the top here. And when I opened that, it uh, it opened all those up. So obviously I've just lost some aero advantage, as you can tell now we're going slower. But the airflow suddenly just, it's quite funny, it just sort of whacked me in the, in the, uh, what's that part of your head? Forehead. Yeah, forehead. <laughs> Without a wind tunnel to hand, I thought what we'll do is test the helmet in an environment that this helmet's going to hate. 15 minute climb, currently 27 degrees. The worst scenario for a road aero helmet. This is what Chris looks like before said climb. Thirty degrees, thirteen percent. No. Conclusion: Climbing with the bullet is fine. My legs and my nose—they might be the issue. <laughs> You have to look at this helmet to see that it is well it's of the more aero sort of design of all the aero road helmets you can see that you can see that because of the tail so like with that you would probably take the same kind of theory that you would with a time trial helmet in the sense that if you can hold an aggressive position on the bike you're going to get more benefit out of this helmet than you would a ballista flip side you know if you're quite upright not very aggressive well tail's gonna hurt you. That's where you're starting to run into a bit of just uh, wind distortion is not the right word but you know what I mean. So you know the more aggressive you are kind of more I think suitable this helmet's gonna be. <laughs> of many many skills that I don't have um I've noticed I, I haven't been getting the you know the drip that the sudden like drip of sweat that you can sometimes get with uh well, with any helmet to be honest like obviously you do sweat and it does come down but you don't get that like sudden waterfall effect that just leaves sweat all over your your sunglasses so I just did a, a squeeze up Barangari mountain there um and uh like sunnies were on the whole way and like there's no like horrendous sweat, sweat drop. The whole team, the whole NRS team have been running these since King Valley. We've pretty much raced every stage. I asked some of the guys their opinions on them. Seb loves it. Do you feel like this channel of air hitting your head? It's nice. First time I wore the helmet, it was kind of freaked me out. I thought there was something wrong, and I realized. So it is very actually quite effective. Ben Van Dam would literally just ride this helmet. Then again, that could be due to the climate that he lives in in Hobart, but they love them. Myself and Junior, we're, as you guys know, we're a little bit more kind of roady style. We have been racing in them in the faster races, but as far as like training goes and that stuff, I'm 
always going to lean towards the Z1. Sam doesn't have a clue. See, the thing you need to learn about Sam is uh, Sam's not a stuff guy, which is great. He doesn't give a crap. He just gets on his bike and rides it very, very hard and seemingly very, very fast. Let's see, this guy's going to get freaked out by me cycling along doing this. Hello. Oh, they waved back. That's cool. Um, yeah, that's Sam Vasco. So he doesn't have an opinion, right? But he's a clown. <laughs> Okay, so all this performance, blah, blah, blah. It all comes second, third, fourth, and fifth to aesthetics. Look, the road aero helmets, when they first came out, you're like, are you kidding me? They were the dorkiest looking things I'd ever seen. And if there was any performance gain, well, it wasn't worth looking like that. This particular one, I reckon looks pretty cool. Uh, I think some of that is down to this grill. I think the grill kind of adds a nice little texture to it. Sort of the profile shot of it's pretty good with the tail and especially from the back. A cooler looking than the, the Giro Vanquish. I think it kicks the pox ass. I do quite like the, the Trek one, the Ballista or whatever that is. Uh, don't mind the look aesthetic of that. Um, I think again, because it's got that little, that little shark's tail thing, which is kind of cool. <laughs> So who is this helmet for? Well, it's definitely for the crit racer, no two ways about it. This is made for crit racing. I reckon the triathlete who you know does offer you the advantages, you could run this in a triathlon, you'd, you'd get a pretty good aero advantage and you could train with it on your TT bike. As a general rule, like I don't think this is a one-stop solution for you. Like, it's a pretty aggressive helmet. Like it does what it says on the tin quite well. The, the aero-ness, you will give a good bit up on just the general riding aspect for the performance gains of the aero. I love it. I love it because I've also got a Z1. Do you know what I mean? Like I said with the position, if you're willing to adopt a pretty aggressive one, I reckon this is an absolute cracker of a helmet. The best one. I will say that, the best one, full stop. It's so hard to be near you You make it hard for me to breathe And I can't stand to see you smile Cause it kills me from within Your voice is like an arrow That pierces me through the heart And your touch is like fire That will burn my skin I wish that I could say what I Yeah, so look, quite a few people actually commented that, like, I haven't actually been myself a little bit in a lot of the vlogs recently in the last month or so, and I actually think there is probably a little bit of truth in that. There's been a bit weighing on my mind, <clears throat> but also there's been some people missing from my mind. I know I'm not supposed to be, but I am. I Fun fact, the flight has been delayed. Uh, gives me a quick chance just to mention, so I shot all of that on the bike stuff on the new iPhone X, new iPhone XS, right? I don't know about you guys, but I was super, super disappointed with that. Like, it overexposed a heap of the background, the wind distortion was friggin' horrific. The uh, the key market of this this helmet, no two ways. Way worse than what I when I normally use the iPhone 8, which is the one I've had. Um, yeah. So disappointed with that, and also the stabilisation. Like the stabilisation was was pretty bad. Like it was pretty jumpy. I'll be shooting back to the Sony RX100 straight away. Um, though I'm tempted by the Pixel, but it would mean going Android. Now I could do that. I think my blood would boil. All right, let's go back in here and find these kitties. You and me. 
the sun.